endoscopic calcaneo, uh, uh, calcaneoplasty or a calcaneal resection can be a nice option uh, for the patient if you have a relatively small uh, calcaneal prominence that you can access through a retrocalcaneal arthroscopy, or I should say endoscopy. Um, here's a brief case. We didn't get to it um, on our uh, on our live discussion, but I thought I would show it here. Uh, so the patient that I'm just going to present is a 34-year-old female. She's active. She's healthy. She enjoys hiking in particular. She's had pain in the heel for about 12 months um, to the point where it's affecting her uh, ability to be as active as she would like to be. It's been non-responsive to physical therapy, and we briefly touched on that. It can the, the mainstays of non-operative treatment that I'm looking for is hearing that they've been working on eccentric exercises, and they'll usually know that term, and they'll be able to show those to you um, in the clinic. Insertional uh, tendinosis or tendinopathy can be challenging to completely load because as you come past a neutral, it really uh, compresses the tendon uh, against, the, against the calcaneus. So it's one of those things that can be a little bit tricky, uh, but uh, in, in any event, you failed non-operative treatment. These are the x-rays. Apologize that they're non-weight-bearing, but um, I'll try to draw out what, what I'm looking at here. If you look at the lateral view here, you can see that there's this calcaneal prominence, and this is right in the area that she is having pain. So um, the after you know some discussion on, on treatment, um, we did go ahead and get an MRI. Uh, this is the um, this is the MRI that we got, and you can see here um, at the insertion, you can see the the Achilles tendon coming down. Yeah, pretty normal looking tendon on this sagittal view, um, or uh, basically kind of the equivalent of a lateral X-ray. You can see that there is some edema within the retrocalcaneal bursa, and the bone itself actually looks pretty reasonable. This area back here doesn't look too bad. And so I'm really looking to see if there's an area of impingement, if there's inflammatory changes to the bursa and that the tendon itself does not look affected. And in this case, um, we can see that that the, the tendon looked pretty good. You can see an area that looked like we could address surgically. So this is a case in which we uh, position them prone and I'll use fluoro in order to mark out my resection. So I'll bring the regular standard C-arm in, and then I'll position that, um, and then I'll be working uh, from the back. Um, and here I've marked out, and I've actually placed two um, K-wires, I believe these were four or five K-wires, um, across the resection, proposed resection area. And I marked this out of my preoperative x-ray. Um, this is uh, the position. I have portals on either side of the tendon here. Um, and, and what I'm doing is, is probably actually making this a little bit more uh, plantar, but you can see that I'm getting portals on either side. When you first get in, it's, it's probably the worst looking um, scope you've ever seen because there's so much debris and you have to really be able to triangulate and um, create a working space by removing all that burst. But once you do, you can actually see um, the back of the, the calcaneus. And here we are. So the tendon itself uh, is coming down here on the left side of the screen. Here is the fibers of the tendon coming down. And then over here, you can see the prominence that we're going to be going after. Um, and if you look at the bottom screen, that's just introducing um, a burr um, into, into that area. And I, I've used either a floral barrel burr um, and then, uh, or a, a three millimeter uh, round tip burr can work. There is a uh, arthroscopic uh, rasp that you can use that attaches to this as well. And that can be uh, quite helpful to use for these resections. And so here you see that I've been basically just kind of working my way. It takes a while to do, at least for me, but um, as I kind of work my way down to the K wires, looking to see that entire resection. This is after the resection is complete. I've got uh, exposed cancellous bone all the way down to the insertion of the fibers. And then I'm bringing fluoro in to check my resection. Um, and this is what my post-operative film looks like. Um, this is back in the clinic. Um, you can see that that area has been resected. Um, she was able to be put into a boot immediately, weight bear immediately. Um, and other than a couple stitches in the skin has relatively small um, surgery. So uh, overall, a nice option for those cases in which there's not a lot of tendon involvement, that there's no intertendinous calcifications. Um, you want to make sure that the, um, 
that you can access all the involved bone through the scope. Uh, and I think in that case, this is a nice option uh, for those patients to get them moving just a little bit faster.